I, I, I don't get to see the comments over here because we are going live with the news. Uh, so we are, I'm starting over. We're going to start from the beginning. And I apologize for this. I, I did not even see that. I'm so caught up in what's happening here that I'm not recognizing what's going on. So uh, I, I just, for, for some reason, I was able to catch it in the camera here that we, that we weren't, didn't have sound. And the odd thing is we didn't have sound in either the YouTube camera or the live stream camera. So, oh my gosh. Anyway, well, great. We'll start over then. Let's start back from the beginning. It's a very important news, very important broadcast. And um, uh, the live stream, you guys that are watching live, I know you'll get to see this now, uh, but I don't know how I can edit out the beginning of live stream where people will know, okay, the first part is not there. But it's okay. The same news will be on YouTube as well. And that camera now, the sound is working on this one as well. So I thank God for that. Uh, again, breaking news. This is very serious. Um, let me take you back. This is where I began at earlier. So let me, let me just uh, go back to the article here. Um, and this, the article on Now the End Begins. Now the End Begins is reporting that they're, they're basically taking the article from Guglio Miotti, no doubt, uh, and they have expounded on his article saying uh, in, in this article, and let me see the date on this, was published July 1st, 2015. Yes, Guglio published the article on, on Arut Shiva just the other day. And, um, um, and now what we have here is their reporting on Now the End Begins uh, by Jeffrey uh, Greider. He reported in this here, the Vatican wants the Temple Mount taken from the Jews. I think that's the same title Guglio used. The Vatican PLO agreements have been signed to enable the eviction of the Jews from Jerusalem. That is their subtitle in this article here. Uh, it is very alarming to note this, but if you look at Guglio's uh, Miotti's article, he's doing the same thing there. He is showing you that this whole purpose in this plan uh, that the Vatican is doing here is to basically oust the Jews from their land there. Now, um, they say here in the editor's note, make no mistake about it, people, the Vatican State uh, Cooperation's main aim concerning Jerusalem is to take it from the Jews and hand it to the Palestinians. Last week, the Vatican signed a peace treaty and gave official recognition to the state of Palestine. The handwriting, as Daniel noted, is clearly and plainly on the wall. Now, I, I would like to say this, especially for the uh, Mr. Greider that wrote this article, I'd like to make one slight correction. They're not doing it to give it to the Palestinians. This is being done to give it to themselves. The Palestinians are only the puppet. Uh, according to Daniel in chapter 11, that the prince that shall come, that's spoken of there, who is a Roman, by the way, comes up strong with a small people. That's the Palestinians. So Palestinians, you are a puppet. You are a pawn being used by them. Ezekiel's prophecy in chapter 35 clearly tells us how that these two nations, that they will become uh, theirs. They, they, they wanted both the nations there, speaking of Jerusalem and the Palestinian state. See, God knew that this was going to happen. Let me take you real quick to Ezekiel 35 and show this to you. It says right here, Ezekiel 35, verse 7, I will make Mousier waste and desolation, and I will cut off from it the one uh, who passes through and returns. I will fill its mountains with its slain on your hills and in your valleys and in your uh, ravines. Those slain by the sword will fall. I will make you an everlasting desolation and your cities will not be inhabited. Then you will know that I am Hashem. Okay? Now watch what he says though. Because this is why God does this. It's why God has to bring Edom to an end. And all you have to do, Obadiah, verse 7, begin there. You find out Esau and his descendants are the ones that stood by and allowed Jerusalem to be ransacked in 70 AD. That's how we know that Esau or Edom in the Bible is referred to as the Romans because it was Titus, the Roman general that was there. That's just for a short note for those that don't know that. Um, verse 10, because you have said these two nations and these two lands will be mine and we will possess them, although the Lord was there. That's Hashem, God's divine name was there. Where was God? God was in Israel. 
This is where he came. This is where he come in, 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 and indwelled in his own son, Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, as, as many of know him today. But he came in his son, lived in his son, made reckon the world to himself, and now they've taken that land and have divided it. And so they say that these two nations, in other words, the Palestinian state and the Israeli state, will be mine. That's what he's saying, because it's Satan in him that's speaking this. Um, and uh, so he goes on to say, uh, I, will, I will deal with you, the Lord says this, I will deal with you according to your anger and according to your envy, which you showed because of your hatred against them. So will I make myself known, known among them when I judge you. Wow. God's going to make himself known to Israel when he judges, um, uh, judges Rome. Uh, and that, by the way, friends, is going to be right there at the very end, or right there uh, when the Vatican, excuse me, when the two witnesses are killed. This is how we know this. Then you will know that I am the Lord, have, uh, uh, have heard all your re revelings which you have spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying they are laid desolate, they are given uh, to us for food. Again, that's how you know it's Israel. God now is identifying Israel in this. Um, and you have spoken arrogantly against me and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard it. Thus says the Lord God, as the, all the earth rejoices, I will make you a desolation. Wow. God's going to make Edom, Esau, a desolation. The land is Israel. It is divided into two nations. You know, it's funny. Just like it was during the time when Yeshua, uh, before Yeshua came, back 700 years before Yeshua ever came on the earth, there was a house of Israel and the house of Judah. It was two nations then. And so what's happening? Again, there are two nations. They've been divided, and the Palestinians are getting that one part, and the Jews get the other part, and the Vatican intends to take both of them. Okay? Now, so he says, when the whole earth rejoices, I will He's going, let's see, let me back up to it again. Thus says the Lord God, as, the, as all the earth rejoices, I will make you a desolation. As you rejoiced over the inheritance of the house of Israel because it was desolate, so will, uh, will do to you. You will be desolation. O Mount Seir and all Edom, all of it, they, that will, they will know that I am the Lord. Read Obadiah, you'll see that. Also in Revelation chapter 11. Um, let me take you there real fast. This, by the way, this is a prophetic news update. I didn't make that clear when I started. I normally do, and I apologize for that, but this is definitely, let me go to Revelation 11. We want to find out when does the earth actually rejoice. So let's go and look at that. Revelation 11, it says here, the two witnesses, by the way, the two witnesses come. We know when they come. They, they come when the temple is about getting ready to be built. That's clear because it says, Then there was given me a measuring rod like a staff. Someone said, Get up and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Friends, let me tell you something. The temple that they're going to build is not of God. This will be of Satan. This is the Vatican working there in order to bring about a temple because Satan said he wanted to be exalted. He wants to be like the Most High. He wants to sit in the temple of God, being worshipped as if he were God. You see, Yeshua had three and a half years ministry on this earth. Is that not right? The two witnesses come and they also have three and a half years of a ministry. There's seven right there. Seven years. There's something I'm going to bring out in the very near future for you. I'll go bring that out a little bit later. But just think of this for a moment. All right. Now, then he says here, going on down, and I will grant authority unto my two witnesses and they will prophesy for, for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand on uh, before the Lord of the truth. See, now moving on down a little further, we see that they bring out the plagues and all these type things. They're bringing the judgments of Almighty God against Rome. Now in verse 7, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up out of the abyss will make war with them and overcome them and kill them, and their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is mystically called Sodom and Egypt, where also there the Lord was crucified. That's right there near Golgotha, outside Damascus Gate there. There is a bus station there, a Palestinian bus station right there, a depot, and this is at the foot of Golgotha. I believe this is where they will be killed, right there in the streets of Jerusalem. 
Those from the peoples and the tribes and the tongues and nations will look at their dead bodies for three and a half days and will not permit their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and celebrate. They will send gifts one to another. What? The earth rejoices. Is that right? The whole earth is rejoicing over their deaths. So this is when God brings that judgment. Now, let's go back to this article here again. And let me share this with Now the End Begins. Um... They say here in 2000, speaking in a mosque, a Palestinian held Ramallah, Yasser Arafat declared, no one will succeed in removing us from our land, including Jerusalem. And the Palestinian flag will fly in the Temple Mount and, and from the churches in Jerusalem. See, they, they joined up with the, with the Catholic Church as well because they know that's their only hope. Uh, Arafat could say that because he, he had won the Vatican support for their terrorist strategy on June 26, 2015. The Vatican signed its first treaty with the state of Palestine. It is the logical conclusion of a long path. When the pontiff John Paul II ascended the Temple Mountain in 2000, Judaism's most holy site, he wasn't welcomed by Israeli officials. Now, let's go a little further into the article. Since then, the Holy See's taken a stance as an ally of the heads of the Palestinian Authority, in the place most holy to the Jewish people became almost a faint accompli. The Catholic delegitimization of Israel passes through the war on Jerusalem and the war on Jerusalem passes through the Temple Mount, the site where the Jewish people worship for hundreds of years. The focal point of every practicing Jews prayers is under assault from the Vatican. Jerusalem is forever the eternal capital of God's holy land of Israel. The Vatican PLO agreements have been signed to enable the eviction of Jews from Jerusalem. That's exactly right. I'm going to show you the prophecy of that. Just one moment here. Okay. Uh, the Vatican, <clears throat> excuse me, this follows a memorandum signed by Palestinian and Vatican officials in 2000, which repeated the Vatican's call for international mandate to preserve the proper identity and sacred character of Jerusalem. It means a return to a time when half of Israel's capital was under Islamic control. The old city was closed to the Jews and the synagogues were desecrated and the walls bobbed wire and snipers divided the city by force. Now that's quoted right from Guglielmo Miotti's article on Israel National News. And that's exactly right. But it is prophecy as well. Again, and you know, I keep, I keep blasting this everywhere right now. The last week we've been blasting this. Why? Because the world's got to wake up, you know, and, and the people need to see that this is written in the word of God. Okay, in uh, Micah, let me take you to it. Micah's uh, prophecy here, verse 6, And that day declares the Lord, I will assemble the lame and gather the outcasts, even those whom I have afflicted. I will make the lame a remnant and the outcast a strong nation. And the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now on and forever. As for you, tower of the flock, hill of the daughter of Zion, to you it will, it will come, even the former dominion will come the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem now why do you cry aloud is there no king among you of course not Prime Minister Netanyahu is not being a king to, 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 to drive out the Vatican but instead he's become the puppet for them just like Shimon Perez the son of Ahab you know God said about Ahab to Elijah he said, I will not bring the judgment upon him because look at how he repents in sackcloth and ashes, but upon his son will I bring it. And that was Shimon Perez. God says here, has your counselor perished? That's exactly right. They'd killed the Messiah. He is called the counselor, the prince of peace, the mighty God, the everlasting father, according to Isaiah 9. So anyway, going back to what it says here, um, that agony has gripped you like a woman in, in childbirth, wreath and labor to give birth, daughter of Zion, like a woman in childbirth. For now, you will go out of the city and dwell in the field. That's verse 10. You will go out of the city and dwell in the field. It's been prophesied. We have brought this message that they were going to do this now for the last year or two years here on, on the New Institute of Biblical Research as well as Israeli News Live, IsraelReturns.com. We have been blasting this over and over and over. It's coming. It's coming. They're going to take the Jews out of Jerusalem. We have shown the checkpoint that they have been constructing now. 
Two years they've been working on widening the highway there in coming up from, uh, from um, Tel Aviv on Highway 1 coming into Jerusalem. They've been making it wider and wider and wider. And now I, we know why. We've been seeing it. We've actually been reporting on it. We've taken the photos ourselves. They built checkpoints there. Several, they got two arches already, but they're going to build two more. And this is so that when you're coming in and out of Jerusalem, you have to go by a checkpoint. You're going to have to present your passport, whatever the case may be. However they're going to do it, they're internationalizing the city. Of course, they've got the nice big modern train rail system that comes from down there at the airport as well, coming up into Jerusalem. Why? To make it more efficient to get people in and out. Rome is going to fake a millennial reign. And also, a lot of the doctrines that have been falsely presented by... <sighs> They've been presented by churches, and this is something i got to bring to you guys in the very near future because God has been showing me these mistakes that are done by church leaders that have been brought forth showing you that certain events are supposed to transpire according to biblical uh, writings there that have been misinterpreted to you. It's not what it seems, friends. So they got to fake it. The building of the third temple is not of God. It will not be of God. Do you think God would accept animal sacrifice? Far be it from God. His own son came and died for us. What more needs to be done? Let me share a couple other articles. Brother Kellen Davison from David Star Magazine uh, sent me several articles here about uh, the UN. Um, News Center is one of these here. It says in San Francisco, band celebrates 70th anniversary of the UN Charter, Compass to a Better World. This was on uh, June 26th of 2015. Bringing the, new, bringing the idea of the United Nations to life required huge leaps of uh, statecraft to bridge differences, declared Secretary General Ben Ki-moon. Today in San Francisco, um, commemorating the 70th anniversary of the adoption of the UN Charter, which he said symbolizes the hope and aspirations that we can bring the world as it is a little closer to the world as it should be, as what he states here. In signing this document, the founders achieved what many thought impossible. It falls to, to us to heed the Charter's call to unite or strengthen or to use uh, their creation, the United Nations, for the common good, he said, adding that the draft of the charter was a glorious gamble. Several high levels officials attending the ceremony, including Nancy Pelosi, Congressman, Congresswoman and Democratic leader of the United States House Representatives, Jerry Brown, Governor of California, Edward Lee, Mayor of San Francisco, uh, and Malala uh, Yousafzai, Nobel Peace, Nobel Peace Prize la uh, laureate, whom the UN chief called the torchbearer of her generation. So much faith was lost in the trenches and ghosts and chambers and two worlds wars in the space of one generation, but they dared to believe in something bigger than a person or country through intense negotiations and negotiations and the realizations. Um, the, the whole point in the article, it goes on, it's a long article, we'll put it on Israeli News Live, but, and, and let me give you another one here as well, this is on the Australian News Barack Obama backs Pope on climate change. The United Nations, by the way, I'm bringing this out because why? It's dealing with the Vatican. It's dealing with Rome's covenant that they have made with the Palestinians, the signing of this agreement here that is going on, and they're planning, the Pope's coming up to the United States in September. Uh, they're going to have the UN uh, meeting over a Palestinian state and they're going to divide Israel, and the whole purpose of this is in order for the Vatican to get full control of Jerusalem. They've already been given Mount Zion. We reported that to you. When Mount Zion was given to the Roman Catholic Church, it was taken from the Jewish people, the Orthodox synagogue that is there, and they will not even comment about it now. I've been there, I've talked to them, I've asked them would they be willing to say something about what has happened, that what the Vatican has done, and they're afraid to even speak about it because they're afraid of being thrown out from the tomb of David there. 
And you guys know I reported to you and showed you how the prophecies being fulfilled from Obadiah that they would drink upon my holy mountain. Let me just, we gotta go back to that in case someone by chance watches this news broadcast and they've not seen any of this before. Another prophecy that was fulfilled is when Israel allowed the Vatican to do a communion service in the upper room just above the, uh, the tomb of David. And of course, Israel had already given Pope Benedict an official seat for the popes of Rome, an official seat at King David's tomb, bringing about what? Making the Pope of Rome the king of Israel or the king of Jerusalem. See, a false king, a false messiah is what it is. An antichristo is what it is. Now, in Obadiah, notice, let's take a look at what Obadiah says here. Um, in verse 10, he says, because of the violence of your brother Jacob, you will be covered with shame and you will be cut off forever. On that day that you stood aloof, on the day that strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners entered into his gate and cast lots for Jerusalem, you too were as one of them. That was Titus, the Roman general. God is speaking about causing Esau. All right, but let's drop down to verse 16. Because just as you drink on my holy mountain, all nations will drink continually. They will drink and swallow and become as if they had never existed. Now, in the Hebraic language here, in verse 16, it says, Kika asha shetetem. That is in the masculine plural, meaning only men would be taking part in that particular drinking. And on the day Rome reports, showed clearly in their own video footage and the commentator there that Pope Francis, his delegation, and the priests that were there were the only ones allowed to partake in the communion service uh, uh, that, they had, that they had prepared that day there, men only. There was one woman in the congregation, but she wasn't permitted. And then after that, they had the communion service, then they had it in David's tomb itself, threw all the Jews out. And it was inclusive of both men and women, because watch what it says next. Ishatu, kol hagoim, tamid. See, that is now gender inclusive in the plural, showing that both men and women would take part in this communion. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Prophecy is being fulfilled right before your eyes everywhere. So anyway, going back to this one here, U.S. President Barack Obama has praised the Pope's call for action on climate change and said the U.S. should lead global efforts to cut carbon pollution and bolster clean energy sources. I welcome, this is Pope, uh, excuse me, this is uh, President Barack Obama quoting here. I welcome His Holiness Pope Francis encyclical and deeply admire the Pope's decision to make the case clearly powerful and with the full moral authority of his position for action on global climate change. Mr. Obama said yesterday, as Pope Francis so eloquently stated, we have a profound responsibility to protect our children and our children's children and children from the damaging impacts of climate change. The pontiff said on Thursday that rich countries must bear responsibility for creating the problem posed by climate change and finance a solution. Um, the leader of the world's 1.2 billion Catholics blamed human greed and, and uh, uh, co co uh, consumerism, but also business and political figures for the current situation. Mr. Obama said he looked forward to discussing the issue with the pontiff when he visits the White House in late September. Pope Francis and cyclical provides a massive mobilizing boost for efforts to reach a UN deal on climate change this year. Campaigners and analysis said yesterday for many people that 184 page uh, Landato C could transform climate from a remote environmental problem into a moral issue demanding their involvement, they said. UN Secretary General Ben Ki-moon, isn't it interesting, his name is Ben Ki-moon, and of course the Vatican does love to worship the sun and the moon. Uh, welcomed the Pope's words and called on governments to put the global common good above national interests. Pope Francis and I agree that climate change is a moral issue that requires collective urgent action, Mr. Ban, ban said. It is an issue of social justice, human rights, and fundamental ethics. Um, there was one other uh, article as well. Let me just bring this one to you and we will close with this news broadcast. UN Secretary General Obama to sign international agreement to end global poverty. 
end illegal immigration now. This is on progressive, uh, Progressives Today. News article there, it was published on June the 30th, 2015 by P.W. Adams. It says San Francisco City Hall decorated for the 70th anniversary of the United Nations. Last Friday, while most Americans were distracted debating the pros and cons of Confederate flag or lamenting over the latest uh, Scott, Scottish ruling, Democrats and world supporters gathered in San Francisco, California to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the United Nations. The event held in San Francisco City Hall was pro progressive star-studded event featuring the likes of Governor Jerry Brown, Mayor Ed Lee, Democratic Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, and it goes on with that list there. Even, by the way, Ki-moon was there, uh, Ban Ki-moon, uh, the head of the United Nations. But this is where it gets interesting. It says that um, the goals are none other than sustainable development goals, which are an extension of the millennial goals, and they will be adopted at the Sustainable Development Summit in September in New York City. Oh, and yes, they do involve wealth redistribution. According to the United States report, sustainable development is all about wealth redistribution. Think about that one for a moment. You wonder why the economy is going to collapse. That's how they can re redistribute the wealth. If they freeze the bank accounts, then they can redistribute it. So all the rich people will be giving up their money and just don't even know it. The growing concentration of wealth and income, which may represent an inherent feature of capitalism, stands in sharp contrast to the increasing, increasingly cooperative nature of wealth creation in ever more in, uh, interdependent and globalization, but segmented and disp dispersed productions processes. Uh, that was Mueller Boating of 2012. It further presents uh, eradicating poverty without breaching planetary boundaries. That's uh, Rockstorm et al. in 2009. Uh, the article concludes here, so in a few months when the American people are once again distracted by the latest news of the day, President Obama will be in New York signing an international agreement to redistribute the wealth of Americans in an effort to eliminate poverty because just as Every progressive communist knows poverty disappears when everyone is equally poor. Very sad to say. Anyway, I, I thank you, those of you on live stream as well that, that, have, that came in here to be with us today. Uh, live stream, the, the viewers are, are growing there. We're trying to bring you breaking news there. We do need your help in doing this. Uh, we need to go back to the front lines. We're going back into Europe to start with. A uh, lot of danger there that's ahead uh, because right now Europe is on the brink of war. And we see that. The United States has troops, tanks, jets, everything you can imagine ready to f com combat Russia. And we're going to be there right in the midst of it, in East Europe, right in the midst of this war. Um, and also, then we'll be going over back into Israel again. Again, another battlefront. And it is... A tremendous endeavor to do and so we ask for your help in making these news broadcasts possible as well as the teachings and the other things that we're doing on a, a regular basis to try to, to keep you informed of the events that are transpiring around the world we thank you for watching and ask that you will share this broadcast it'll be on YouTube here within a, within the next hour ask that you would share it everywhere you possibly can the evils that are going to be done to the Jewish people. And, of course, this is also the time when the Messiah will make himself known to them. He will send the two witnesses to reveal, not only to them, but even to the world, even to the Christian people that have been twisted in their doctrines. You know, they've tried to hide the gospel from the true Christian people, but God is going to restore that word back. That's what Yeshua said in the Gospels, isn't that right? When they ask him, doesn't, why did the scribes say that Elias must first come? That's Elijah, Greek for Elijah. He said, he shall truly come and restore all things. That time has yet to come. I can prove that because I know there's been those that have felt that, that Elijah has already come. But were women restored back to their rights? Did women, were they allowed to preach the gospel? You know, there is books written by women during the times of Yeshua. Mary Magdalene wrote a book. Many of them, they had voices. The words of Paul were corrupted. Paul even knew that. 
He said, though we, one of you among us, or an angel from heaven come and preach anything else, and I would have said to you, let him be accursed. And then we find out they changed his words. He knew that this was going to happen. But Moses and Elijah will come. Moses will let you know what the law really says. I see a lot of things have happened that the people have gotten in the permissive will of God. But it's not his perfect will. And the two witnesses will set a perfect will. You know, in order for a rapture to come, the bride must be without spot and without wrinkle. Presented before the Lord. I believe it'll take a restoration of the word to make us without spot, without blemish. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.